Officials in B.C. are investigating what's believed to be the first human case of avian influenza in Canada. The infected person is a teen now being treated at B.C.'s Children's Hospital. And while human cases are very rare, it's raising questions about what you need to know about bird flu. Well, here to help answer that is Dr. Marla Shapiro, CDB's medical expert. Dr. Marla, thank you very much for being here. First, what is avian influenza and how can it be spotted in birds? You know, it's an interesting question, and we think back to almost five years ago at the beginning of the start of the COVID epidemic, and people beginning to think about, is this something we need to worry about? So avian influenza, if we take a look at what it is, is exactly what the name suggests. It's an influenza-like illness that happens in birds, typically. So it's a viral infection. It spreads very easily and quickly among birds, and typically it comes from birds that are migrating through Canada or through the United States that are carrying the virus and then infect our own birds that are here. Generally, at the present time, it's very rare to see a transfer from humans to humans. So what we are seeing is the transfer from the avian flu, so a bird that's infected, to someone who's typically in contact with a person. So we've seen a case here in Canada, about 44 in the United States, which may be an underrepresentation. And if you look at the symptoms in birds, they're not all that you know, dissimilar to what influenza is like in humans, with the exception of the decreased egg production, which is what we see in birds, but not human. But in typically, you know, that lack of energy or appetite, these birds definitely look unwell. They're swelling around their head, neck, and eyes, coughing or grasping for air, sudden death. They're not all that different than the typical sort of flu-like illnesses that one would expect to see in a person. But so far, given what we know, we know that close contact can have a person who's with the infected animals be at risk. But if one person gets it, typically spreading it to another person, so far we haven't seen that happen very easily. Hmm. Uh when it comes to spreading to humans, is it is it just whether you're in close contact? Is it eating chicken? Yeah, so we get all those questions all the time, and, and they're good questions. So typically, when we think of influenza, if you and I were looking at human influenza in the flu season, we know it's respiratory-borne, easily transmitted. It's why this time of year you hear me say, take your flu shot, take your flu shot, take your flu shot. But right now, in order for an individual to get human spread to have avian flu, it's from the infected poultry to the individual, and it's usually close contact touching the infected bird, the saliva, or the feces. Um, but typically, it's not all that common for inhaled droplets, but it's possible that it could be. As far as if we're exposed to food, food that's properly cooked certainly is not a risk. If we think of unpasteurized milk products, if it's infected, that potentially could be a risk. But if we look at what our present systems are in place for milk pasteurization, pasteurization of cheese, cooking food properly, that's not the concern. The concern is whether or not there could be a change in a mutation of the avian flu virus where it became more easily transmissible from person to person, and that's not anything we've seen right now. So what do we know about how to stay safe? So, you know, one of the most important things that we learned with COVID is the importance of surveillance and knowing what's happening in our wastewaters and knowing what's happening in the behavior of the virus. So right now, we've got a lot of our agricultural uh, groups who are busy monitoring what is happening into these birds and whether or not farms need to be dealt with. As far as we're concerned, let's first talk about the flu season that really matters to us, which is our influenza season. So we think about keeping an eye on our immunizations, which means regular flu shots won't protect you from the avian flu, but certainly right now, our risk is human flu. You know, if you're on a farm and you have birds that are unwell, clearly it has to be reported. You've got to keep other animals away so that you don't get mammal to mammal transmission. So what is happening on the farm is very important. And surveillance, surveillance, surveillance to see if anything changes in the mode of transmission or the ease with which it's transmitted to a human is important. Right now, the investigation that we're all sitting on is how did this young individual get this avian flu, what type of exposure was it? But, it, you know, we, we learned a lot from COVID, the importance of, you know, keeping our eye on the ball, keeping the eye if things are changing. Is there a change in the route of transmission? But right now, this really is close contact with infected animals and not easily seen human to human. But it's a story, clearly, that we're going to continue to follow. Mm -hmm. All right. Dr. Marla Shapiro, CTV medical expert, thank you, as always, for being here. See you next time.